Hi, my dear friends. How are you today? Well, let's go for some Feng Shui again, shall we? A question I get asked really a lot is how do I know if my house has good Feng Shui? Well, that's something we're going to have a look at exactly today in this video. And my name is Sandra and I've been teaching and consulting Feng Shui now for nearly 20 years. First in Germany and now in beautiful New Zealand. Well, Feng Shui is the study of life force energy, which we call Qi, and that permeates in our environment, in our home, outside, in our whole life. And Qi is a product of the balance of yin and yang. And if you're not quite sure what these words mean, you can look at some of my basic videos here in this channel um, and just see what it is. And if you still have a question after watching that, just comment below. I will answer that. So <clears throat> if you're not sure about your Feng Shui in your home, where do you start? Are there some areas in your home that are more important than others? So yes, and where do you really want your Feng Shui to be right? This is what we're going to have a look at. The first one in the last episode was your main door. So we did that, and I told you that if the main door is uh, well done, then your Feng Shui, generally speaking, is quite okay if you've got that one right. The next one we're looking at is... <clears throat> the bedroom. Yes, because that's where we spend a lot of our time, don't we? So let's get that right, shall we? Good. So our bedroom, hmm, what do we have to look at with that one? Well, we know quite a lot that this is all about yin, isn't it? A bedroom should be more yin than anything else, because this is where you want to sleep. So this is where you want your energy to be low. We've got dimmed lights. We've got not that much going on in the room. Um, it's not our exhibition area. And if we use it as an exhibition area, then yin photos or yin pictures that are really calming down. Ideally, no blue light devices, no televisions. Um, if you're sleeping well with that, well, don't change it. Always don't change the running system. But if you're not sleeping well and you've got a television in there, maybe you should get rid of that and try again. It does have an influence. So let's see what the journey of chi in your bedroom looks like. Okay. So let's have a look. What have we got here? Well, in this bedroom, and it is an exhibition bedroom, you can see that already. There's a lot going on. Again, if this person sleeps well in that bed, in that bedroom, well, don't change the system. But for my liking, there's a bit too much going on. I would like it a bit more toned down and not that many plants. They're all just green, so they're fine. I'm not against plants in bedrooms, um, uh, not unlike, unlike like some other Feng Shui people. I'm not against plants in bedroom, but it has to be still yin. And there needs to be, um, you know, there's an area for it. And seriously, at the, bed, at the head of your bed, um, I don't think so. Um, for various reasons. With that. Some have to do with Feng Shui, some have to do with hygiene. So <laughs> that's what it is. So um, in this bedroom, so in this bedroom, for instance, we've got a perfect example of a clashing door. So this door is, seems to be an end suite bathroom, is clashing into the bed. So have it closed most of the time, which is common sense, isn't it? I mean, you don't want to run into the door at night when you get up because you need to go to the bathroom or anything. So keep that door closed as much as possible. I'm not talking about bad energies from the bathroom. I'm just talking about being sensible, not having a door clashing into your into your uh, bed at, at, at any time. So um, really make sure that it's... And if that would be the entrance door, if that would be the entrance of your bedroom, you'd have a classic situation of the chi running from the door to the window. So which means that um, there's always a chi flow going on um, in the bedroom. So ideally you would want it, but I show you another picture on the other side. We're gonna get to that again. So, whoa, what have we next? Oh my God, yes. So this is this picture I found. If this is a holiday home or for a weekend, uh, I probably wouldn't mind. But seriously, that is to me a Feng Shui nightmare. You have glass windows in the back and it's even able to you're even able to open it so you've got a glass window in the back there's not there's not even a headboard to make your head feel secure to make you feel secure to have less influence from air coming in and with the window above you you have a permanent chi flow in your head it's really bad for your sinuses so if you have trouble with your sinuses or one of your children has trouble with the sinuses 
and the bed is standing underneath the window, move the bed. Seriously, I'm really serious. It might get better then. Because you've got this constant airflow from the window coming down on you. It causes not just sinus problems, but it's really hard to get a deep sleep. Every time you're going into deep sleep, you probably come out again because there's something going on, especially in winter, of course, but also in summer. So it's really, it's really not a good situation to have that. And similar to the next picture, exactly, um, when your head or your body is suppressed, beams, we don't like beams at all in Feng Shui, you might know that already, because it's suppressing and it's kind of dividing the room, it's cutting into the room, but definitely not over the bed. I mean, this is probably not a bedroom as such anyway. I mean, it looks like looks more like a like a living room to me but for whatever reason people like what they like again if those people sleep well in there hmm but i doubt it to be honest so really avoid beams over your bed it's it's really not a good thing um what have we here? That's what I've been talking about before. So if you've got the entrance to the bedroom going out to the window, you've got this um, flow of chi on the bed. Of course, this is if you have a small bedroom, this is the only way. Then better put the feet there than the other way around where the head is because who seriously wants to sleep with the head towards the door? I mean, just think about it. If we're coming back to one of the main principles of Feng Shui, the caveman principle, I explained this in one of the other basic videos, but let me explain that again. It's not that long ago, just a few thousand years, that we were living in caves, and this is still ingrained in us, that we want to be safe. So where are you the safest in the cave? Not at the entrance, because that's where the saber-toothed tiger gets you straight away, or the bear, or whatever is in your area common. You go to the back of the cave because you are safe there. You've got the cave wall in the back and you've got more time if somebody it doesn't even have to be a saber tooth tiger, can be an oppressor, can be, can be an attack. So you've got more time to get ready to defend yourself. So this is why you actually want to sleep with your head the furthest away from the door because your head is the one that you really, really want to protect if an attacker comes in. And it also gives you more time to react if something like that happens. So you would not want to sleep with your head towards the door. Does that make sense? I mean, it's a Feng Shui thing, but I think it does make sense, generally speaking. Okay, so for those of you, again, who know your Gua numbers and your auspicious directions, um, the facing of the bed is actually where your headboard is. So the direction that you want to face is not the face face, it's the crown of your head. So look for your auspicious directions. So ideally the healing one or the life force one, um, for those who know what I'm talking about. Um, if not, there should be a link somewhere to the life Gua number um, video and possibly also the workshop. Um, it's facing is where the headboard is and your bedroom governs your relationship if you want to go even deeper into the flying stars, into the Bagua. Um, this is what your bedroom tells you. So go down to your floor plan and have a look where is your bedroom in your house. And then let's see if you can change, if you want to change the bed, if you want to change the direction of the bed. That is actually what we all want to uh, optimize, changing the direction of the bed so that you can sleep well. And again, don't change the running system. If you're sleeping well, you don't need to change anything. If you have metal in your bedroom and you sleep well, don't change anything. I'm only talking to those who are having sleep issues. There's a lot that we can do about our sleep from a Feng Shui point of view. And a lot of the Feng Shui point of view is actually now science and common sense. It's about deep sleep, how to gain deep sleep. Because that's what you need to rejuvenate. That's what you need to have a good brain health and health in your body as, as, as in all, all in all. We now know that bad sleep actually causes a lot of um, problems in our bodies from a health perspective. I mean, again, that's also common sense, isn't it? So have get your bedroom right. This is definitely the second area where you want your Feng Shui to be right. If you have any more questions, comment down there. I will answer the questions. If you like what you see, what you hear, like it, share it, subscribe, let me know 
what is it that you want to hear the next well the next video actually in this series um is the next important area and that is a point that used to be one of the most important areas of the house but it's diminishing it's really getting less and less important due to the change in our society and the next one is the kitchen that's what we're talking about in my next video here about where you want your feng shui to be right have a fabulous time let me know if that was helpful and i see you again soon here on this channel. Bye.